Great, here we go. I'm very pleased to welcome you to this uh, presentation of climate themed shorts by green map makers from Washington State in the US, Hadera, Israel, um, Havana, Cuba, Kanazawa Prefecture, Japan, and New York City. And we have a surprise from Cornwall as well. So Green Map, just to give you a quick introduction, is a now 25-year-old project that's engaging local people to make maps about sustainability. So that's nature, culture, social justice, and green living, all of which are part of climate health. And um, this project is now open source and you're invited to bring it to your community and really bring people together. So each Green Map's locally made, we all share tools and experiences to help each other's project be better. It's been used in 65 countries, governments, nonprofits, universities, schools, design and community groups have made the maps. And as you can see from the images, it's often a project that's filled with joy and discovery. So the common point between all of us are the green map icons. And these are some that relate to climate change, climate health. And there's 170 icons in the set. You can add additional local icons, whether you're making a printed map or using our platform. So these icons cover a full range of topics and we've also matched them to the SDGs. That's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So this helps people connect locally to things that are um, happening in their community and attach them to these intersecting goals that the United Nations has developed over the past few years. All of this, by the way, is at greenmap.org slash icons. These are some of the tools that we've co-created with people around the world, and they include books, apps, now videos, and presentations. We invite you to explore them at greenmap.org. Our work in New York is all about collecting outcomes, assessing them, and creating new tools. At greenmap.org, you can see lots of different approaches, and this all supports a locally determined mapping process. So you may see today a process that really inspires you to get started, or you may say, I need a new way to get this going in my community. So here at Glasgow, you can see the incredibly wonderful work that's been done on the Glasgow Green Map. Everybody's using it. And it's very exciting that we have a brand new app that you can download. That works anywhere that there's a green map. So you can give it a try. It just was launched last week. It's just in Apple so far, but uh, I-O, I-S-O, oh, whatever the numbers are. <laughs> but you're welcome to give it a try. We're especially looking for feedback and you can see all of our programming here at greenmap.org slash COP26. So that's where you'll be able to find this recording later. So we're gonna add, be adding more images and things as we go into that blog post. This is Cornwall, England. This was last week. I was very lucky to be there. And this, this is only 30 seconds. So, yeah, so hopefully those, it will show that the, the, when they, if they have the inquiry. Um, what is interesting to me here is that because this was um, a turn and point, a link point sort of thing, mm -hmm. between... Isn't that because that's where we were? This, uh, uh, this was 18 people from 86 to 6 years old. You can see how beautiful it is there and how interesting of an event it was for people, many of whom have been doing this work before. This is Mary Hunt. I'd like to introduce this by saying, eating organic food and local is sustainability in action. Less carbon, better soil, cleaner water and cleaner air, all while making ourselves healthier. The first film is from a recent farm tour celebrating our bounty in Port Washington, Port, excuse me, Port Townsend, Washington State. It's all the way west in the US. It shows in a very creative way where our local food comes from. 
The second video demonstrates the Feed Jeffco Green Map. Students can learn how their school is part of a sustainable food network that includes farms, nonprofits, and businesses. Together, we are growing groceries and building a stronger community. We think that's such a fun video, so we wanted to kick us off, but here's now Mary. Well, you'll see how she's helping young people use our Green Map platform and getting them interested and involved. Go for it. Hello, I'm Mary Hunt, the lead map maker of Feed Jefferson County. This map is about food, education, and enterprise development for our students. Here on the east side of the Olympic Mountains, we only get about 19 inches of rain a year. So as the climate gets hotter, being able to grow our own food will become more important. By simply growing and eating organic food three times a day, we can improve many climate related conditions. Cleaner air, water, soil, while improving our own health and building our community. That's our goal. Our school farm to fork program is about one of 40,000 such programs across the U.S. We are fortunate to have a bounty of fresh local food, but that is meaningless unless the kids know how to plant, prepare, and share that bounty. That's where the green map can expose them to that larger growing community. Last year, gleaners gathered around, oh, 5,000 pounds of apples for applesauce, which ended up in the school lunches. Nearby farms also supplied veggies and meat. It's education through eating. Feed Jeffco started at one school and now reaches over 2,500 students in the region. We chose the open green map to show off our food system for its functionality, its collaborative style, and its deep library of how to use ideas. Currently we have content on over 100 sites, with more being added. Not only can students and teachers locate local resources, but anyone else in the community can use it as well.
Each site is the sum of its parts. Many farms produce food, but it also offers products and maybe even entertainment. Once you click on a location dot, you'll be offered a snapshot of what the site contains and a chance to open up more information. Maybe kids want to search using words. In this example, they search for any site that mentions food bank in its copy, whether it's in the headline or the description. Students can see the plethora of sites that opened up on the right-hand side that somehow are affiliated with the food bank activities. Then click on each one individually to learn more. Or they can search by using icons. The first and primary icon is what always shows up on the map, unless they search for something else. In this case, Community Gardens comes up on the map. But if they search for schools, then the school icon is what shows up on the map. So let's dig into our food system. Now that our site is created, it can be deployed many ways by site, icon, words, hard copy, or database. This is an example of what icon options are available on the local food section. But there are more if you click on the culture and society, sustainable living, or on the nature sections. When kids do conduct a search by icon, they filter out everything except the topic they're looking for. Let's say a student wants to know who is making the specialty foods in the area. She can click on the artisanal food icon. Another student wants to know how people are composting successfully. Or maybe talk to greenhouse owners. Or where to volunteer. Everything can be filtered. With 55 icons being used, they have essentially 55 maps with thousands of ways to slice and dice the information. While we're building out the Feed Jeffco map, a campaign tool was developed. This is a fast way of creating new sites with a specific purpose. Here a class is interested in putting American chestnut trees on the map. It's good to know that all maps, sites, campaigns can be kept in private mode until they're ready to go for the world to see. With 100 sites, we found by planning ahead, it was easy to capture and present consistent information with a similar format. That also made it easier for users to read the information as it was expanded. An allocation dot, I'm sorry, a location dot, opens to a snapshot and then a large overview page. The overview page then can link to content outside of the green map. To make that happen, reverse the process. First decide what you want on each overview page, add that copy, pictures in the same order, and then that page autofills the snapshot page, and then the map primary dot. We use bullet points over paragraphs for a quicker read. If students need more in-depth information, they can go to the website link. Sometimes dots don't tell the story fast enough. Students can also see the big picture of snapshots. They just click on the squares in the bottom left corner. One click and it takes them to a page with all the shots. Once there, they can click on the list icon and get a text overview of all sites which can scan and then export to a spreadsheet. Click on the squares and they're back on the snapshots. Just because Open Green Maps is online doesn't mean it can't print the information. On a recent farm tour, we printed off the snapshots and mounted them on a foam board. It was very powerful to see the entire food system at a glance. A real who's who of the local food production and distribution. People came to see the food bank gardens, but then they saw how the gardens were part of the bigger food system. Some of our gardens overlap with schools. During the school year, students raise plants and during the summer, volunteers take over. The food isn't wasted. It goes to school lunches and culinary courses or to the food bank.
Students in the community can see how OneMap serves education, organizations, and businesses all at the same time. The Living Map is always being updated and growing. Take a tour and see how we grow food and kids using Open Green Map to capture how we feed Jefferson County. And thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Mary. That was, it's really terrific. Um, Mary's been a mainstay support for this ongoing development of our Open Green Map platform. It's something that's free for all of you to use as long as you're making a non-commercial project. Her video really shows how you can break it down this tool is, this video is gonna be available later just if you wanna use it as a tutorial. So we very much welcome the help of everybody to help get the word out, better ways to use these tools. And in her case, it's really about sustenance and uh, livelihoods and climate change. Um, I wanna just show you, these are some of the green maps, Cape Town, Santa Monica, there's New York, there's Victoria, there's one from Copenhagen, Liverpool. So you're not limited to making a green map on this platform. And it can, doesn't even have to be a, a physical manifestation of a map. It can be a video experience. There's all sorts of ways. And in many places, the process is as important as the product. So now we're gonna jump over on the next slide over to Israel. And Leah's gonna tell us about her project. Recently, the entire world and Israel in particular have been experiencing significant climate change. We feel a rise in temperature fires and floods in our region. The green gives us educators a great foundation for, for field activities. It gives students inspiration and an opportunity to feel part of something bigger along with meaningful learning of extensive literacy skills. Well, our main access in Hadera Green Map in Israel in the last year were encouraging initiators and activism among fourth grade students in all the city on the subject of sustainability while connecting to, the, to their curriculum, Strength, strengthening the sense of belonging of students and their families to their city and promoting ICT skills and cultivating digital literacy in accordance with the 21st century. All this is done by way of collaborative learning at all levels of collaboration. The collaboration took place between students in the classrooms, between the classrooms within the schools, between the schools and the community and the municipality, and between schools from different sectors. And especially the collaboration with the special education stood out as the special education staff members testified Acquiring these 21st century life skills and essentially hands-on experience will allow these students to take an active part in similar future activities with proper assistance as needed. This year, Hadera celebrated its 130th anniversary and is the first in Israel to lead such an initiative on the new international platform of GreenMap2. לרגל חגיגות 130 השנים להיווסדה של העיר חדרה, תלמידי כיתות ד' בעיר השתתפו במיזם מפה ירוקה. התלמידים נחשפו וחקרו אתרים ירוקים בסביבת בית הספר שלהם, ואת המידע הם תעדו על גבי פלטפורמה של מפה דיגיטלית בינלאומית. קבלו הצצה למפה הירוקה החדרתית שלנו.
Go ahead, Leah. That was wonderful. Do you want to add something? Yes. Uh, uh, as you see, all the all the all, every school did something else else for So through the green map process, the students began to dream and aspire, plan and fulfill. The teachers let the students lead, and those in turn began to take the responsibility into their own hands. They operated on a local level, local and global, in the same time. We are so happy that in the coming year, the blessed cooperation continues and the fabulous work of many people involved in the Green Map activity expands. Thank you so much, Leah. I just wanna say that every place is different. We all face different challenges when it comes to climate and policy and community. So now we're gonna to move to Cuba. And I'm very happy that Liana Bidart, who is one of the founders of the Mapa Verde Cuba Network is here, as is Aliuska Miranda Gutierrez. And I'm gonna speak because they sent a introduction and it's about this very short video from the community of Los Pasitos that's in the municipality of Mariano in the Havana province. And this project especially relates to gender violence and self-care, but because it's using the Mapa Verde methodology, that's the unique um, Cuban version of making green maps, it's really become a tool, it's really a part community participation and it mobilizes people around finding solutions to common problems. So in Los Pasito, there's a solidarity patios network. This is in the informal settlements. It has support from the Canadian Fund for Local Initiatives and this Felix Varela Center. We have actually been partners with the Felix Varela Center since 1998. And today, this video is, was filmed in February and March of this year. So their goals were to carry out a preliminary diagnosis of the selected patios using the green map method to create a sketch about the distribution of the crops and elements of these patios in order to recognize existing problems and to carry out existing transformations. And this was done through seven virtual meetings and five tours of these patios or courtyards and identification of the regularities and differences was very important. They mobilized women from seven patios and farms in the construction of a communication projects, which they, not only is the list little video, but it also supports them in organizing their spaces, disseminating results, and in present, being able to present what they did in different meetings. So they also create a proposal to create icons for vermiculture and fruit tree orchards. So this is one of the unique things Cuban green map makers have done is they've created so many icons unique to their situation. Two nights ago here at the COP, I saw the premiere of a new film about Tierra Verde, which is the new policies that Cuba is developing with their national delegation here. And I feel this connects very directly. So let's watch this minute and a half or two minutes. I hope the subtitles work. Go ahead, Fumio. A partir de talleres anteriores, la sensibilización de una metodología que utiliza el Centro Félix Varela que se llama Mapa Verde. Estoy contenta por el, la creación del Mapa Verde porque ahí se refleja toda la finca completa de todo lo que tenemos, de cómo está organizado. Estos otros mapas de, de otros patios, de otros patios que ya tienen su mapa hecho de otras provincias, los he visto y es realmente muy importante. Para mí ha sido maravilloso. Gracias a los profesores, a todo, no me acuerdo de mucho, pero bueno, le doy las gracias que nos ayudaron mucho. Por ejemplo, a veces llueve y hay tremendo fanguero y, y ellos son una persona que eh, ya que él a veces no le gusta estar subiendo la escalera, no le gusta cualquier cosa. Ya yo tengo mi mapa y yo le digo, profe, mira aquí, no es necesario que vayas al patio, mira aquí tengo en mi mapa. Decirte la palabra que ya tengo identificado mi patio. Que lo que tú tengas en el patio puedas ayudar a la comunidad que necesitan. Están limpiando los patios para meterse en el proyecto. La pretensión nuestra sería 
llegar al final de todo este proyecto a realizar una maqueta que abarque el área completa de los pocitos y las áreas aledañas que poco a poco se van integrando. Creo que sería muy beneficioso y eh, poderla colocar en definitiva en, en el centro sede que está allí en los bajos de, de las gradas del estadio. This work is so important to people's uh, well, sense of well-being, sense of connection, and their ability to continually do more and more for their community. So um, we're going to go on to the next little video, but I just want to say how much I appreciate all that we have learned from the uh, Cuban projects. So now we're going to hop over to New York City, and we're just going to dive right in. So let's play the video. This is a how-to video for making a green map bike tour. So we're looking at climate change and resiliency resources in the community. Bike tours are a great way to promote and explore your green map projects, encourage community involvement, and also have some fun. Let's start with some preparation. First, brainstorm and choose an area, topic, or theme for your bike ride. Your focus can tie into an existing map project or generate new ideas. Second, find places and speakers that will make your tour interesting. Ask friends and experts to prepare short five-minute talks. They can raise the profile of your event and get more people interested. Third, sketch out a route that connects the locations and your speakers' topics. When the time comes, speakers can ride along or meet you on site. Next, do some promotion to get people interested. Name your tour and promote it using social media. Advertise your tour on community calendars and invite a photographer or videographer to come to document the ride. Now, let's take a look at Green Map NYC's recent Lower East Ride Tour to get a few more pointers. Arrive a few minutes early. As riders gather, give a little intro to the route and the issues it covers. Also, hand out your maps. If you can, show some historic maps of the area to help orient people and get discussion started. Once everyone arrives, have people introduce themselves briefly. My name is Jessica Brunaccini. I am the project manager of the Polar Partnership. It's Try and encourage networking. People on your ride probably have similar interests and would do well to get to know each other. If you plan to collect sites for your online green map, show people how to add locations directly to an open green map on our mobile website. Once you're ready, it's time to head out. Our first stop was at a local community center. Welcome to Sixth Street Community Center. We have a nice beehive on the roofs. Here, a local beekeeper told us about his urban hives and explained a little bit about the process of beekeeping. He even provided a honey tasting. Food and hands-on activities make the ride even more interesting. As you continue on, keep the ride moving, though there may be lots of discussion. In between the speakers, you can point sites out while rolling past or when stopped in traffic. Keep the group together. A sweep really helps. This designated last rider keeps people from straggling and can help if there's a flat tire. At subsequent stops, we heard from climate experts and economists. These experts help put larger issues in a local context and deepened our tour's sense of place. After the event, don't forget to share videos and photos from your ride. Thanks to our post-ride promotion, we even won a Creative Climate Action Award. This press brought our message to a new and wider audience. In the future, building up a series of tours will extend the importance of your exchanges, build stronger networks, and generate new solutions to community issues. Have fun and keep mapping your way to a sustainable future. Um, so that video is on our website, I think in two languages, and maybe you can get the subtitles to work, I don't know. This is the little map that we made as a result, and it connected people with the then new bike share system. It also talked about climate issues in the community. So you can see Hurricane Sandy's footprint in New York City on this map, even though the water was gone the next day. So bicycling as an everyday climate change countermeasure could be the theme of a single map. We made this in Chinese, Spanish, and English. When our city was saying you need the app, we knew you just needed the map to new, use that new bike share system. So now let's hop over to Japan where Fumio and his students have been working on some very interesting projects. Hello everyone. 
I am a student at Azabu University. You know that Japan is located in the far east of Asia, don't you? Azabu University, located in Sagamihara City, Kanagawa Prefecture, consists of the School of Life and Environmental Sciences and the School of Veterinary Medicine. The goal of education and research at Azabu University is, symbiosis with the earth, toward a harmonious coexistence of humans, animals, and the environment. We study environmental research and analysis, understanding climate change and biodiversity, as well as environmental education and the SDGs at the Department of Environmental Science in the College of Life and Environmental Sciences. Our campus is filled with living things. We also have a museum of life and facilities that are environmentally friendly. Today, we are going to introduce the SDGs Green Map, where local people subjectively search for and map local resources and issues. Anyone can do it, from children to the elderly. The method of sharing the past and present of the community and drawing the future is suitable for science shop and community-based research. Green Map is a map created with global green map icons developed by Ms. Wendy Brower, an environmental designer in New York. Since 1995, more than 1,000 projects have been carried out in 65 countries around the world. In Japan, the first green map was created in Kyoto in 1997 to coincide with the third session of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Here at Azabu University, we have made green maps several times since 2007. The feature of the green map is that we can search for local resources and issues from our own perspective. The green map, which visualizes regional information using global icons, can be combined with the SDGs icons to create a vision of what we want our community to be in 2030 in relation to the goals of the world. Let's focus on the SDGs. In September 2015, the United Nations adopted Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The 2030 Agenda outlined 17 common goals that should be addressed worldwide using partnerships for people, planet, prosperity and peace. These are the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. The 17 goals of the SDGs are interrelated, integrated, and indivisible. For example, poverty is caused by complex factors such as ecosystem deterioration and or disasters brought by climate change, gender discrimination, education, employment and so on. In this way, the SDGs are universal in that the 17 goals are interrelated but the specific issues will appear in a variety of ways in each region. Therefore, it is necessary to understand the resources and issues in each region, and take actions to realize the ideal state in 2030 while cooperating and collaborating with various stakeholders. Because the 17 goals of the SDGs are so comprehensive and abstract, it might be difficult to use them to set an agenda for the region. Rather, in order to share the characteristics of a region with many people, the green map icons are useful because they more concretely represent sustainable living, nature, culture and society. First, let's draw local resources and issues with the universal green map icon. Next, refer to the correspondence chart between the green map icons and the SDGs, and attach the SDG icons to the green map as well. This correspondence chart was published by Green Map System in 2018, but it is just an example. With this as a guide, you can all figure out which Green Map icons relate to which SDGs icons. Since 2011, we have been conducting research on biodiversity and practicing community development based in a revived fallow paddy field in Aone, Midori Ku, Sagamihara City. Oh, man.
The people of Ao Ne used to live in a subsistence economy with diverse livelihoods such as sericulture, charcoal making, forestry, farming in small fields, and collecting river fish. However, as fossil energy and synthetic fibers become mainstream and integrated into the global market economy, the loss of local livelihoods results in an exodus of people to urban areas in search of work. The population continues to decline, and Ao Ne Elementary School, with four students in all, closed in March 2020. In October 2019, Typhoon No. 19 hit Ao Ne, causing landslides that collapsed houses and killed people. The mainstreaming of fossil fuels has increased CO2 emissions and brought about climate change. In addition, as charcoal and firewood are no longer used and the mainstream of wood has become imported, forests have been neglected, the ground has loosened, and they could not hold up against landslides. In this way, economy and society, energy and climate change, ecosystems and biodiversity are all interrelated. After the typhoon, during the exchange meeting with local residents, we made a green map regarding the old livelihood and life, and related it to the SDGs icons to create the Ao Ne SDGs green map. By creating a green map, it became clear that there were many water wheels in Ao Ne that used the abundant water. Later, we checked at the local museum and found out that there were 34 water wheels in Ao Ne in the 1940s. There was a way of life and livelihood using natural energy. We can't go back to the past, but we can learn from it, transform the present, and create the future. Community development using hydroelectric energy is still valuable today. The SDGs Green Map can be shared with many people by relating local resources and issues to the SDGs. The Green Map system provides not only green map icons and a table of correspondence with SDGs, but also web-based services such as Open Green Map 2. How will you use the SDGs Green Map to create the future of your community? Did you enjoy it? Thank you for your attention. Do you want to add anything else for me, all? That's it. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> these, are, these are my students. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's wonderful. So, so time is not so enough. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, how? I, but. And before we do, I want to say that Fumio and his students actually helped us create the whole chart for the SDGs because we really need to make these more visible in our community. So working together, we have this more greater potential for seeing the SDGs, for um, helping people not only survive, but thrive wherever they live, get, helping young people become leaders um, and help their vision of home take root in new ways. And I just wanna ask, does anybody here wanna say anything or have a question for us? Maybe we'll take down the screen. Terrific. And I see some past and present MAC Green Map projects here, like Michelle Thomason from, um, uh, I don't, I think you're in Spain now. Is that right, Michelle? Um, but uh Hi, Wendy. Hi, so good to see you. You too. But Michelle was the first, one of the first people to make a green map online. So that was so early. That was, I think, 1998 that you made the, worked on the, um, was it Utrecht? In the 1997. I know because um, I was having contractions finishing off the programming with my daughter being born. <laughs> Yes, it's just so wonderful to see the evolution over the last 24, 25 years. That's why I wanted to take a peek today. It's just so heartwarming to see it. Fantastic. Well, you are <laughs> having lunch, I think, right there. Are you, Steve, where are you based now? Are you in uh, Bristol, UK? Um Hi, 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 uh, Wendy. I'm in uh, I'm in near Liverpool at my sister's house on the Wirral. 
Um, I just had my booster jab yesterday and uh, I'm feeling really uh, wiped, a bit wiped out really. <laughs> but I thought I'd just uh, I'd pop in because it's easy to watch a presentation and they're great presentations. And Wasn't I really like- I love these videos. Thank you everybody who, who did such a beautiful job with them. Go ahead, Steve, sorry. I, I like the way that uh, Fumio's Japanese green map ties together the SDGs because they're quite, they can be quite complicated and especially how they, how they relate to each other. And if you can demonstrate that through a map, it's really, it's a really, uh, it's a great win, yeah. Right. So Steve took part in a project that just won an award from the European community, and they co-created a really wonderful book you can find on our website called The Four Bs, Four Different Ways of Making Green Maps, especially with adult learners. So it's a great project. I think it's up there in three or four languages. Um, I does anybody else want to add something at this point? I thank you for putting the YouTube channel in there. There's more videos there. So you might see Lebanon or other editions out there. I welcome any other questions. I see Jackie is here from, aren't you from Manchester, Jackie? I'm putting people on the spot here. <laughs> hi, 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 Wendy. I'm actually in Glasgow. I don't know, I'm not in Glasgow. I'm in Sanka which is um, quite near to Glasgow. So I, yeah, I, this was a really, really great session. It's just amazing to see how, how many people are adapting it to their own environments, like, and how different they are, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's really been wonderful to, uh, element of all of this. And I'd like to say we only have a minute left or so, but all of you will get an email from us with, um, an announcement of our next um, discussion slash demonstration of how to use some of the tools. Um, let's keep in touch, even if you don't make a green map now, uh, 20 years from now, you might be ready to do it. But we're, I was at a session last night with um, Neil Lovelock, who made the Glasgow green map. He was one of the speakers responding to business. Business kept saying, we lack communication tools. And this was really meaningful for me because this is something that all of us have worked on and seen great results from around the world. So anybody have a last word they want to add? All right, so we'll, we'll sign you. off then. Saying thank you so much and especially thank you to everybody who was ready to jump in when the technology wasn't so um, on spot, but we got it done, right folks? Thank you, everybody, and let's do all we can to the messages from COP26 move forward. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye, everyone. It was nice to see you all. Indeed. Good night from Japan. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, we had four continents here at least. Thank you all. Bye, Liana. Whoa.